Hello, it's Alden. Here's how I built this lookout tower in a shipping warehouse using Blender and After Effects. The goal here is to make an overlook tower that's similar to an air traffic control tower in this big warehouse of shipping containers. There are gonna be two actors up in that tower looking down at a third actor standing on the floor below. And so I have keyed footage of the actors, but one thing I'm gonna do to start with is bring in this 3D model of a person just to make sure that the scale for everything I'm making uh, makes sense to the size of a person. I'm going for like an air traffic control like shape. So to do that, I'm going to start by adding a circle. And then if you toggle down over here in the corner, bringing the vertices down to six so that it's a hexagon. So then from there, if you tab into edit mode, you can extrude it up. So if you extrude along the Z axis and then scale it up, you can kind of start to get this shape, making sure it's the right scale for the two characters that I already have in here. I know it's gonna be jutting out against the wall, so I'm actually gonna add a plane and make a wall so I can see what that looks like. And I think it looks uh, not quite what I want, so what I'm gonna actually do is kind of extend it out. So delete all these faces and then extrude those edges straight back so that it's kind of sticks out and is not a circle so much as it is more of like an oval shape. But this is kind of what I was going for. Choose the edges on the top and the bottom and make a face. Um, and now we have the beginnings of our tower. I'm gonna go into the asset browser here and I have this bottom of, I think an escalator and that kind of angular shape repeats in a lot of the other visual effects in the film. So it's architecture repeating itself. And uh, with messy 3D scans like this, you can select all of the vertices and go to mesh bisect and you can remove everything on one side of a line that you draw. So you can really quickly uh, create some straight smooth uh, edges there. So I'm just gonna clean up this 3D scan for a bit. So then I'm gonna loop cut this tower, select the edges here, and I'm gonna bevel them so that there's a flat surface and take these windows and then extrude them in by extruding along normals. I'm gonna take this concrete texture that I have in my asset browser and apply it. And then for the windows, I'm gonna add a new glass texture. It's a little squat, so I'm gonna adjust the, the shape of this a little bit, bring the, the ceiling in. Um, I'm gonna remove this 3D scan that I have below it and just take the existing shape that I have and extrude it and move it so I can get that like 45 degree angle. I'm also gonna extend the sides. So instead of just this little room, it's kind of like there's this whole hallway going along um, the side wall there and then make some loop cuts and make some windows there as well. I'm gonna actually take all the faces from the windows and just make that its own separate layer. And then that way I have some control with some rendering um, because I'm actually gonna do a lot of the glass uh, in After Effects instead of right here in Blender. I also have this staircase in my asset browser from a um, some something I found on Turbo Squid or something like that. Um, but little staircases like this are really nice to sell just a bunch of extra detail. Um, and so I'm gonna take you know my person here that's the right size and make some uh, make the staircase make sense uh, and just sort of line it all up so that there's these uh, stairs over to the side wall. And I'm adding this just because I think that makes sense. If you had this kind of overlooking terminal thing, you're gonna want a way to go in and out of that uh, observation deck. I have this overhead light asset in my asset browser. Um, and a lot of these assets that I have built are because, you know, I've been working on this film project for uh, doing the visual effects for now a year and a half. And so as I do each scene, I just end up with more and more um, assets that I'm saving that I get to reuse. So it seems like every time I have a new scene or a new location, it goes faster each time because I've already have this um, built up library, which is nice, but I'm gonna put those up on the ceiling. I've got this orange light uh, warm glow inside, but I'm gonna add this blue light for the overall scene. So for this shot and this angle, I'm just gonna add this big area light, set it to blue, and that'll give the kind of contrast of colors. And throughout all of our production footage, there's usually a lot of orange lights in the background. And so every time I'm doing a visual effect shot, I'm mimicking lighting just so that it all feels very nice and cohesive and feels like the same people were lighting these shots as if they're real as they were when we were on set. 
it. Now I'm going to do the fun part, which is just kit bashing and adding details. And so again, this comes from having done a bunch of different uh, scenes and stuff. And so I have a lot of little doodads and things like this. This is an elevator door. I think it's an image texture. I don't know where it's from uh, that I had extruded. Um, so I'm just gonna add that door to the background here. So there's another way in and out of this little tower. This is a 3D scan of an actual prop that we used on set that was kind of this um, scanner that's next to a door. Uh, so you'll see that pop up in production footage, but also in some VFX backgrounds. And there's also a moment in this scene where one of the actresses touches a hand scanner and I used the same prop for that as well. Uh, fun fact, this prop was used in Book of Boba Fett as well. It's a vintage bowling game. I'll do a tutorial eventually on how to do this hand scanner, kind of mixing this production shot with a 3D tabletop thing because that was actually a lot of fun and I think turned out really well. I have these models of 3D lights, so I'm going to put them up on the top as kind of spotlights shining down. Now I'm gonna work on the concrete texture of this building. So right now it's just a plain concrete texture that I have, I believe from textures.com. So I'm gonna take these wet concrete textures also from textures.com uh, and bring them in here. So I'm going to use that texture as a factor between the concrete and a diffuse texture that's gonna be not very rough. So it's a little shiny. So it looks like there's kind of water seepage from all of the edges. When you do this technique, one thing that you wanna do is go into your UV maps and make a new UV map, add a node for UV map, and then that way you can unwrap each different texture slightly differently. So the concrete's gonna stay how it is, but then I can go through and unwrap just the drips and have control on that overlay. So I can take what would be, you know, a repeating concrete texture throughout this entire structure and add some irregularity by having all these water drips of different sizes and different scales and offsetting them all. Uh, and it's just gonna add a bunch more detail and realism to the model. Now I'm gonna go through and uh, add some more detailing, especially to the window uh, sill areas. So I'm gonna take these window planes that I had and uh, duplicate them and I'm gonna use them to kind of create like a seal for a window. So I'm going to extrude in a little bit, uh, make it this dark color and inset, extrude it and just try to create this extra layer within the window because it's not just glass to concrete, there would be some type of rubber or metal seal layer as well. So I'm gonna add all of that detailing there. When I do a render from Blender, I set it to a multi-layer EXR file, and I set it to DWA-B. It does say it's a lossy format, uh, but the quality is always excellent, and the file size is pretty small and kind of comparable to a PNG sequence. And I have the final output, but I also make sure to include uh, an emissions pass and sometimes a missed pass if I need it. When you bring an EXR file into After Effects, uh, it shows up as totally black and you need to put two effects on it so you can even see it. One is Extractor and uh, that just comes with After Effects. And then in this drop down menu, uh, you set it to whichever pass you wanna see. And the other one is a color profile converter and you wanna select Linearize here. I also made my own preset so that I can just double click it. And every time I have an EXR, I can immediately see the image there. So now I'm going to take a render and bring it into After Effects and start to put the comp together. So usually in my process, when I get um, my 3D model in a place that looks somewhat decent, I will start this compositing step in After Effects right away. And then as I adjust the model, I can make some adjustments um, in the composite too, but I like to kind of do a draft of the whole thing and then go back to the beginning and make adjustments as needed. So first I'm going to mask out these little terminal things in the foreground. And then I'm going to make another mask of just the top of the terminal itself. Then I'm gonna take a duplicate of the footage I'm gonna use the CC power pin to adjust it and set it to an alpha mat of the top of that terminal and then do some levels and tints and blurs to make it look like a, a reflection. So I'm gonna duplicate that process for the other actor as well. So now I'm gonna take, uh, duplicate the EXR layer here and set it to emission, bring that on top of everything. And so that's gonna have just the lights. 
uh, the overhead lights. And then if I set it to screen and then add a blur to it, I can get this nice glow from all of the lights in the scene. A side note about EXR files though, you can't draw a mask on them. You have to use um, a shape layer or something and set it to an alpha or a luma instead. So I'm going to take a solid and mask out these lights uh, because I just want the emission from these outer lights and I have to do that with this shape layer. And this is what's really gonna tie everything together. So it's basically a few layers of different textures overlaid on top of each other and some blurring uh, to kind of mimic looking through this dirty glass. First, I'm gonna take this kind of grungy texture and you can find any grungy texture on textures.com, on Pexels, uh, or any other kind of texture pack you find online, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but something that kind of looks a little bit like dirty water that's been dried on the surface. Make a mask, an ellipse mask, and kind of remove some of the center so most of this dirt is kind of on the edges of this window. And I'm gonna use CC Power Pin because you can see the skew and the angle, and you can also take the line and stretch it left or right and keep the same um, skew, if that makes sense. Um, so I did do a, a render with a glass texture from Blender. And I did that so I could kind of see what the light was doing. Um, and I see that there's kind of some highlights over here. There's this blue uh, color. So I'm going to add a solid that's blue, um, set it to lighten, bring the opacity down and uh, use the window mat. Uh, for it, and I'm just going to create that blue sheen manually. Um, there's also gonna be this sort of yellow area over in the corner, probably because of these lights up above, so I'm gonna also do that with a sh colored shape layer. I'm gonna take this wet window texture. It was the one that I was using in Blender, and I'm actually gonna bring that in instead, just because I think it looks more like a, uh, the kind of window that would be there, especially with the wet drips right below the window. Um, I think this kind of matches a little better. The other, that first grungy texture looks a little more like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> mold spores or something like that. And now I'm gonna add some hazy blur to the window. And so the technique for doing this is to add a fast blur and also a CC composite and set it to around 50. And you can play with the blur radius and that CC composite setting. And what it's gonna do is soften the image, uh, but still, but not just blur it completely. This reverse that I did, it really feels like you're looking through hazy glass. And this is looking pretty good. And now I'm going to add some more glowing to the highlights, add some grain on top of it. Uh, and then I'm gonna render out the shot and it looks pretty good. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. Let me know uh, if there's anything you wanna see in more detail in the comments below. And thanks for checking it out.